Hello, uh, it's Snack from Crow's Nest. It's been quite a while. Um, today I've got some stats from the Edison League. Um, it's a 5v5 format. Well, each team has eight players. And uh, every week we end up in a 5v5. So you can see like Ring of Destruction versus Crowbones. Five players versus these five players. And in the spreadsheet, we recorded every single match, all the replays are in here for 15 weeks, which I should have checked this ahead of time, but it's a lot of matches. <laughs> um, so I've got some statistics from this league. Um, but before I go any further, I just want to say, everybody make plans for October 26th, uh, Orlando at Versus Games, Oviedo technically. We have the 3v3 Edison format tournament. There's going to be good prizes and it's going to be really fun. There's a lot of really talented players coming down to Orlando on October 26th, so mark your calendar. Anyway, the regular season has just concluded and I've got some great stats for you. So uh, let's check something. First of all, we, rec we recorded everybody's decks. So as you can see in this sheet, like Mayberry played Vayu Turbo weeks one and two, didn't play week three, played Blackwing, et cetera, et cetera. And you can see whether they won or lost and everything. And that lets us create a matchup table, which longtime fans of the channel might remember that we did for some early tournaments. But the problem with tournaments is that the sample size just isn't super large. And it's a little bit self-selecting because people who win continue to play more matches, whereas people who lose are just out of the tournament early. So the data is a little bit weird when you take only from tournaments, whereas this format, since there's 15 weeks, regardless of whether you win or lose, you get good stuff on the decks. So let me zoom in here. And I actually found some interesting stuff in here. So these are in order of how often they were played. Blackwing was the most played, then Vayu, then Frog, then Hero Beat, Flight Sworn, Zombie, etc. And uh, as you can see, as I have written here, the pilot is on the left and the opponent is on the right. So if the cell is red underneath the icon, that means that this top deck did a good job at defeating what is ever, whatever's on the left, essentially. So as you can expect, Blackwing has like a Gladiator Beast went 1 in 10 against Blackwing, or Dragons, that's not Turbo, but right, other kinds of Dragons went 1 in 6 against Blackwing. So Blackwing is really good against these, but interestingly, this is like a low sample size, just Flamfell's 2 and 0 over Blackwing, but still maybe significant. But this I find very interesting. Diva Hero went 9 and 4 against Blackwing, and Light Sworn, this is a big one, went 17 and 12 against Blackwing. <clears throat> And that is my biggest takeaway from all these statistics is that Light Sworn, I think, has a better Blackwing matchup than people realized. And part of that is that Light Sworn decks are able to side into Royal Decree and they're able to side into Consecrated Light. And if you can establish both of those cards together, then Blackwings can have an extremely difficult time outing that because often their only outs to Consecrated Light are cards like Icarus or Deck Devastation Virus. <clears throat> So a deck like Light Sworn, which is like totally fine into Vayu and Frogs, especially the Christia variants are good against Frogs, um, can actually have a really good time post side against Blackwing. So I think Light Sworn is something that we learned is that this deck is criminally underplayed in the format. Um, Hero Beat, we actually started at the beginning of the season for maybe the first four weeks or so. We saw a lot of the deck being played and... It just like wasn't performing and I think people started dropping the deck. So that's interesting. Um, feel free to like take a screenshot of this page because I think this is where most interesting matchup data comes from. But keep in mind that like most of the good stuff is going to be in this range over here where decks that are all like reasonably played. Once you get over here, all the data ends up being like four and one. Well, that's just only five matches. So how much does that really say? But I do have this over here on the left, like the total win rates. Um, and as you can see, Light Sworn has a really good 56% win rate. <clears throat> so I'm going to explain the two columns. You can see the raw numbers here. <clears throat> um, Frogs actually didn't have the best win rate, but keep in mind that if Blackwings has a 56% win rate and Vayu Turbo has a 56% win rate, 
they have to be winning against something. And some of the most played decks that they're going to be winning against are Frog Monarchs and Hero Beat. So it's like, I don't know how much that says as against them, or it's just, well, you're just the opponent of Blackwing and Vayu, you know? But uh, what I did for the weighted win percent, so the total win percent is just adding everything up. It's like, how many matches were played? How many times did you win? How many times did you lose, right? The idea behind the weighted win percent is let's make it so that let's put, let's assume that you faced 23% Blackwing, 20% Vayu, 15% Frog, whatever the standard is, let's, let's pretend that the decks you faced were exactly as would be expected based on the War League stats that we have. And it weighted in that way. So if you have a good matchup against Blackwing, that will boost your weighted win percentage uh, because that represents a big portion of the field. Whereas if you have a bad matchup against Blackwing, that, like, in this matchup table right here, if this column is like not good for you, then that means that even if you have been getting wins against a bunch of other decks, what does that say for how well you would do into a normal field? So that's just like an interesting stat. I don't know how much it says, but take this with whatever interest you ascribe to it. So as you can see, like fairy goes from 41 to 48 because it has a good blackwing matchup. Whereas light sworn, goes from already having 56 into the entire field to 59. So like I was saying, I think this is definitely one of the most slept on decks in the entire format. And it's probably somewhere that people should focus their attention into optimizing a Christia Sworn list or something like that. So to get more into the decks specifically, I have them all here. You can see that Blackwing was by far the, well, actually these two were by far the most played decks where they each made up more than 20% of the uh, of the meta. Kind of crazy that combined they were 45%. <clears throat> and then Frogman at 15. Hero Beat started at 10, like I said. And as you can see with this graph, the amount that it got played kind of decreased as time went on. Same with Zombie. Zombie actually had probably the worst performance of any deck. Maybe you could argue Amaryllis, but I think... <clears throat> the perception of zombie was that it was a really <clears throat> powerful deck, like competing with all of these others that are listed up here. And that was just not the case for War League specifically. And I do think that War League is a different <clears throat> format than like a tournament. In a tournament, you can bring zombies and like they don't get to prepare for you ahead of time. They don't get to know, oh, we're facing a team that has like two or three zombie players. Let's all bring Blackwing so that we can punish them or something. If you go into a tournament, you just go in and it's like, oh, I'm facing Vayu, awesome for me. Oh, I'm facing, I don't know, Light Sworn, I'm totally fine with that as a zombie player. Um, but anyways, zombies had a really rough time in War League. Uh, yeah, and here's some more stats. You can see this graph starts to get crazy when the sample size gets lower, where it goes off the charts and stuff. But <laughs> these are what we have. Um I have the win percentage here pulled from the other sheet and the average pilot win percentage. So basically every time somebody plays a deck, it records their their that player's win rate, regardless of whatever deck they played. And so the idea here is we can average together everybody who played Blackwing, what is their overall win rate for each time that they played Blackwing? And then Let's also take the dex win percentage and we can kind of like subtract it. So the deck Blackwings gives you a, you know, 1.3% higher win percentage than just the people who are playing it if they played any deck uh, and the same here. So whereas like Frog Monarch, when you, if you, these people have a winning win rate and then when they play Frogs, Frogs the deck underperforms. So it kind of like nerfs them a little bit. <laughs> And then here with Light Sworn, once again, you see a huge bump where the deck is actually outperforming the people who play it. Uh, and the skill curve here is like, the idea behind this is it's kind of a graph of all the people who play it. So you can see the people at the top, they have the highest win percentage, and then like a bunch of these players play it, and then it kind of drops off at the end. Um, it's more informative here where you have like dragons, you have a few people who are really kind of carrying it and then a steep drop off and then some more people playing it 
you know, this graph, I don't know how useful it is, but it's cool to look at, I think. <laughs> and I have this graph as well, which just shows you, let me zoom out a little bit, just shows you over time uh, how the decks were played. You have Blackwing at the bottom here with the percentages labeled and then Vayu and Frog. And the other ones, I kinda, they're too small for me to label the percentages. But as you can see, the hero beat went from being pretty wide up here to getting pretty narrow down here toward the end of the season. Um, I also have info on teams and their um, deck, deck composition. So the number one team played over 30% Blackwing and over 20% Vayu. And that got them, they were just like leading the entire season long. The second place team played over 40% Blackwing and over 30% Vayu. So I think it's really becoming clear that, you know, the, the format is definitely Blackwing and Vayu. And if your deck can't handle those, you're going to have a rough time. So everybody should really be building to handle those two decks. And the tricky thing is usually it's very hard to build a deck that counters both of them. I think a lot of plant decks do very well into Vayu, but they do poorly into Blackwing. Or a deck like uh, Hero Beat might have a, a decent chance into Blackwing, but it has a tough time against Vayu. So it's the two decks kind of are yin and yang. I don't know if that's quite the right, right way to phrase it, but the two decks <laughs> are, you know, two ends of, of, a, of a coin or something, and it's really hard to build your deck to defeat both of them. And part of that is just because the two decks have such strong side decking tools in oppression and deck devastation virus. Uh, but as you can see, yeah, the top top uh, teams usually leaned heavily into the meta decks over here and the teams toward the bottom were more <laughs> we were more uh spread out and we kind of it kind of showed that we didn't do as well so that's kind of sad but once again i say it's more league and it's not necessarily the same as a tournament uh there are a lot of very talented players in this um in war league so something to look at i also let me actually do this by this. <clears throat> so these are the top players of the whole season where we had Obito, who you may have heard of. His favorite deck was Blackwing. He played that the most, going 13 and two, very good. <clears throat> he had a seven win streak at one point, 87% win rate, all that kind of stuff. So some interesting stuff. Rob the Man, who you might remember, he got, I think, fourth at <clears throat> RBET Orlando. And he was playing dragons there, and he played it here with the uh, the debris dragon Raiko build of dragons. Surprisingly, not too many value turbos at the very top, but we had Gibbonation and Turna. Turna, very talented player. <clears throat> and something else about this favorite deck is that it will default to the higher alphabetical deck if you're tied. So I know I think Freya had quick draw. At one point, she's so good with Quick Draw, but I think she played it just as much as Blackwing, and so it ended up being tied, and tie goes to the higher alphabetical, but she did play a lot of Quick Draw going 10 and 5, so that's pretty cool. One of the best Quick Draw, probably the best Quick Draw player in the entire format. Is there anything else I wanted to point out specifically? I think that's pretty much everything. I got this, and this, and this um so yeah pretty cool stuff i will once again let me just check i will go ahead and get into a tier list something that everybody in the world loves <laughs> um just based on some of the data i haven't had a tier list on the channel since probably like july of maybe two years ago or one year ago i don't remember but uh, with Lightsworn doing so well in War League, I thought I'd update it. So I think that's no surprise. I would actually put these two decks alone at the top. This is going to be a quick one. <laughs> I think Frogs is clearly the third best deck. And <clears throat> I would actually put Chris's Sworn as the fourth best deck in the entire format. Um, I think it has the potential to do very well in all three of these decks actually probably Vayu I would imagine would be the hardest for it but haven't looked into it too much I think Dragon Turbo is a very good deck something 
I remember hearing Jake XO, very, very good zombie player. I think he got top eight at a Deck Devastators or an RBET or something. And his kind of philosophy was just like, I keep building my zombie decks. A lot of people build zombie decks to always have an out to oppression. You always have Wing Blast or Dust Tornado or something or Judgment or something like that. And he's like, you are sacrificing so much of your deck just to have an out to oppression. What you should really be doing is just have as much gas as you possibly can to fight through other kinds of back row. And if they have an oppression, you just take the loss because you're nerfing yourself too much by trying to always have an out to oppression. You're hurting your combos, you're hurting your ceiling, and you're valuing consistency, being able to do something too highly. So I think that's like a mindset that a lot of good players need to grapple with, where they often value consistency too much, where they think, if I'm allowed to play the game at a basic level, I'll always win because I'm a good player. But that's not true against other good players, obviously. So sometimes you just need to build your deck to sometimes just win outright and sack. And that's really what Dragon Turbo and Light Sworn are capable of doing. So I think Hero Beat has really fallen off. And maybe people have just learned how to play against the deck better. <laughs> I'm not sure. Or maybe people have, with the other decks have just gotten more skilled. And so they're able to express their skill more with the other decks. But Hero Beat is really lackluster lately, I feel like. I think the pure build of Light Sworn is also kind of slept on. Uh, I'd put zombies here. Even though they performed badly, I think they're better in a tournament setting. Uh, now, where would I put the next? I think I'd put trap dragons all the way down here. I don't think they're quite as good as these three, like simply. I think these decks either have a good matchup into these higher decks, or they um, are just like really explosive. <clears throat> I guess dragons are kind of explosive too, but... That's just my personal feeling. I think the deck is uh, not as cohesive as something like Zombies. <clears throat> I do think that these Plant Avarice decks and the Machine Avarice decks are pretty good. I would put Glads in here. Glads also performed pretty well in the War League, I think. And they're, they've been doing very well. I think they've been doing pretty well in tournaments lately. I think the community was sleeping on Glads a little. Uh, and I'd put... I want to put Amaryllis in this tier. I, I think Glad's probably go here. If I'm going based on the Edison War League stats, I would put Amaryllis even lower. But I can't bring myself to do it. <laughs> uh, so I'll probably have fairies at the bottom. I'm not going to rank all these, all these uh, decks because it's really not that important. And we don't have stats on them. So this is mainly about the War League stats that we gathered. And let me just check that I have stuff ordered within tiers. I'd probably put value above Blackwing. This ordering I think is correct. I'm tempted to put Light Sworn above, but I won't. I might put, I might put, uh, I don't know. We'll leave tier two. This tier, I don't know. I, I kind of don't like it, but I don't know where to place all these. <laughs> um, we can put this at the top, probably. Oh my god. Oh, I don't have Diva Hero on here. Diva Hero goes... It does have a good matchup into Blackwing. We saw that. Or it seems like it. Once again, it was a low sample size. This deck is also kind of bricky, but like I was saying earlier, I think you just have to sometimes accept that you brick. Um, I'd probably put it at the bottom of Tier 2. And then... Something like this, maybe? Yeah. So that's what I'm going to go with. Um, anyway, hope you enjoyed it. I know it's been a while. Uh, I brought you some stats, so <laughs> there you go. And uh, make sure to like, watch another video on the channel. Adios.